What is going on YouTube? One only extra here. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome to the next Tech Tuesday episode. So last week we talked about the settings I used for GoPro. Today I'm going to show you how I color grade that GoPro footage. We're just going to pull in a little snippet, go over the little steps that I do, and then show you what the actual outcome is from tweaking that footage. So come on, check this out. So this is the first time I've ever tried to do this screen capture and a tutorial at the same time. So let's see how this works out. So I brought in two clips here. One of them is straight from the GoPro with GoPro color on. And the other one is with flat and all the other settings I showed you guys earlier. So as you can see, the GoPro does a really good job. I mean, it's just, when you look at this, you got all the greens, these are very bright. And this right here, the clouds are washed out making the blue kind of dim. And again, because this is so green, the grays and the browns sort of tone down a little bit. And then because you're on ISO or because your color, your white balance and shutter and everything's on auto, this starts to change and your colors start to change a little bit. So I like a little more control over that, which is why I brought in this guy. This is in flat, this is GoPro flat. And as you see, when you set up your screen, if you have Adobe Premiere Pro, you got a color right here. And then you go to the meter scopes and it shows you this little guy right here. And that is your highlights and your shadows. And it kind of shows you if you're just way shadow or you're way clipping on your brights and your highlights. Right here, we kind of see we're a little low on the highlights, we're kind of dark. So we can adjust that. Unlike the GoPro footage, if you try to adjust this, you're gonna be fighting yourself. There's a lot of things that are already set in place from GoPro and it makes it a pain to edit. So let's get into our editing here. We're gonna set up right here. And I chose this shot, I know that it seems kind of close, but we have some red, some white, some blues. And then as we kind of trek through here, you'll see some greens as well. First thing you wanna do is getting your white balance right. Now there's different schools of thought of which way to go. Um, me, I like to use the eyedropper and then just kind of bring it back to what seems a little more realistic, a little better. And we kind of play with these a little bit and then because this is slightly dark, I'm gonna bring up the exposure just a tad, nothing crazy. And then I don't mess with the rest of these guys over here, the tone, any of that yet. So what I do now is we go to the curves and the curves are something that I really had to learn how to use. And I think there's something great for people to use because you can adjust these. They're not intimidating. You do what's called a little S curve and it really helps change that look at the difference between stock and now fixed fixed stock that's just your white balance changed and a little s curve here nothing crazy now sometimes i'll adjust all of the reds and blues and greens and the s curve we'll do it this time just kind of show you because what this does it actually creates contrast you see how this darkens up and these kind of come to life a little bit now the blues can make it warmer or colder temperature wise and look at that red start to pop now that's a huge difference from what it was to what it is really cool right you can see it in there edited not edited edited not edited color graded look at that see how the blues really stand out now and the red's not too crazy Again, I haven't touched anything else yet. So we're gonna go to highlights. We're gonna bring that up just a little bit. And the problem that you gotta keep in mind with the highlights is you start to lose the clouding. You start to lose some detail when you put too much highlights in. They can go one of two ways. You can really take down the highlights, but because this is sort of a darker shot, I'm gonna bring the highlights up a little bit and the shadows down just a hair because we're already pretty low on that scale down there that you, when you look at the scopes. Mess up the blacks a little bit and then saturation, eh, just a, little, just a touch, nothing crazy. Because your curves already start to help with that saturation. Now, because I bring in all my footage in low sharpness, we're gonna kick that up a good bit. And that's gonna bring it to life a little more. Now we go to vibrance. Vibrance is just the tones of certain colors, like your skin tone or these reds here. And you can tell how this just kind of fades out a little bit. I like to kick these up some because I don't need like saturation will do the whole thing. It'll bring up all of the colors a lot. And I don't really want that. I don't really need that. 
Here's the GoPro footage, and then here's the edited footage that I just did. Go back to standard. Here we go back to edited, and it just looks super vibrant. Nothing crazy, pretty realistic, and it just makes it look like a better shot. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this very quick and dirty color grading that I did here. And this is sort of the process that I go through. I kind of make it as realistic looking as possible, especially like just regular shots. You know, when I try to do the more cinematic stuff, I'll add some more darks so and be a little more saturated. But for footage like this, just straight from the GoPro, I like to just try to make it as realistic looking as possible and maybe kick up a little bit of those colors that would normally be understated. So with that, I hope you enjoyed this Tech Tuesday. You all have a good one. I'm out.